They must repent of their sins and the Holy Spirit must transform them. You can't just tell somebody to stop being racist. The Holy Spirit has to transform them. They have to repent. They have to have a change of mindset before the Lord. They have to turn their heart towards the Lord. What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you saw the title of this video, today we are talking about a very interesting experience I had at a church. <laughs> but first, if you are new here before we get into this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Give this video a thumbs up, you know, hit that like button and make sure you hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload a new video. Y'all, so this is going to be a super interesting video. It's an experience that I had when I visited a seeker friendly slash dead church on purpose y'all so back last year in 2021 when I was visiting churches with my family when we were just trying out new churches visiting new churches and well now we're at our home church which we love very much but before we found our home church we visited this church purposefully that was seeker friendly dead lukewarm and just wanted to try it out you know thought you know how bad could it be like we'll just try it out we'll go there once Sunday. And so we went there and I'm going to tell you all my experience. It was, it was bad. <laughs> it was real bad. So I honestly, you know, I pray constantly, continually, Lord, wake up the church, wake up the dead and the dry and the lukewarm churches, because I know personally that the dead and the dry and the lukewarm churches are not winning my generation back to Jesus. Right. Correct. Yes. We know that, right? <laughs> so I didn't know how bad it was. Like I I knew it was bad. I knew the seeker friendly churches were bad. I personally attended a seeker friendly church when I was younger for many years and I still just didn't really know the state of how bad it was because I hadn't been to one in, in years. So we attended, you know, walked in and it just felt very seeker friendly. Like it was very comfortable. Like it makes you feel comfortable. So you walk in, you get your coffee, you walk into the church service. It's movie theater seating, which I am not against movie theater seating in churches. All right, y'all, some people were making TikToks, like twisting my words on this, but listen to me. It was, you grab your coffee from the coffee station or the coffee bar, or whatever you want to call it. You'll walk into the movie theater seating and immediately when the, when the worship started, it felt like a rock concert. I'm pretty sure they're almost flipping their hair up there on the stage and they were just jamming out. Like, honestly, I felt no anointing behind it. I didn't feel the Holy Spirit. I haven't experienced experienced that in a long time because I've been to a lot of churches, especially traveling last year, and I haven't experienced that in a long time where I just did not feel the presence of the Lord just strong in that church whatsoever. Like, I almost didn't feel it at all. Like, you know, you know the Holy Spirit's with you, but just in the in the atmosphere of the church, like, you, you just did not feel the presence of the Lord. And when I looked around, it was almost like I didn't see a vision, but it was almost like I was seen in the spiritual realm, and I just saw dead people. Like, it looks like dead people holding their coffees. Nobody was raising their hands and worshiping. Maybe one person. And this is like a big church, y'all. And just everybody's just walking in there, holding their coffee, just kind of bopping their head along to the music. And so you get through the music. And then the Sunday that we visited, it was a Sunday on racism, which it's good. We need to talk about racism in church, right? But this was like, it was insane. Before they went into the preaching, they opened it up, the whole sermon on racism with a secular song on racism. And the problem with the sermon at this church was that it was TED Talk style. So there was no power of God behind it. And a lot of it, and we're, what we're seeing in a lot of these seeker-friendly dead churches is that it's with persuasive words of human wisdom. It's statistics. It sounds like a TED Talk. It sounds like a TED Talk, looks like a TED Talk, smells like a TED Talk. It must be a TED talk. I'm <laughs> messing. Um, but yeah, it's like there's no, like Paul talks about in Corinthians. You know, he said, I don't come to you with persuasive words of human wisdom, but by demonstration of power of the Holy Spirit. Like we're, we are supposed to operate in the power of the Holy Spirit, not just persuasive words of human wisdom. And so the whole sermon was not about the power of God. It was just about statistics on racism and how we can do better. But the problem is that 
It's Jesus who transforms hearts. It's Jesus who transforms lives. It is by the spirit of God. You can't just force somebody to stop sinning by just telling them to stop sinning. They must repent of their sins and the Holy Spirit must transform them. You can't just tell somebody to stop being racist. The Holy Spirit has to transform them. They have to repent. They have to have a change of mindset before the Lord. They have to turn their heart towards the Lord. The book that they promoted, so the pastor, the preacher promoted this book from the stage, you know, regarding racism. And the book was literally endorsed by Bill and Melinda Gates. Bill Gates, y'all, like, that's insane. So they're pra- playing secular music in churches. Everybody looked dead. Just, you know, maybe maybe there's one person lifting their hands worshiping the Lord. And it was like a rock concert. I didn't feel the presence of the Lord. It was very comfortable. I felt like I was in a movie theater. Like, y'all, I felt like I was just kind of sitting back and watching this all happen like I was in a movie theater. And my heart grieves for the church. Like, I almost wanted to just stand up in the middle of that church service and just preach the truth to these people. Like, wake up. Do you see see what you're in? Do you see the dead and the dry church that you are in? Y'all, this is a local church. This is a big church in my area. Like, this is so sad that we have mixed the church with the world. And the problem is that as the body of Christ, we need discernment more than ever. Listen to me. We must be rooted in the word of God so that we can see and that we know when we attend a seeker-friendly church, a dead church, a lukewarm church, that we will know immediately that this is not the church that that I need to be attending because I will die spiritually here. I know people personally who were on fire for Jesus but attended dead and dry and lukewarm churches and they died spiritually. I'm going to read Psalm 119 starting at verse 97 and on. And it says, Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Your commandment makes me wiser than my enemies for it is ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers for your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the aged, for I keep your precepts. I hold back my feet from every evil way in order to keep your word. This is David talking to the Lord. I do not turn aside from your rules, for you have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. I love this verse. This is Psalm 119 verses, or this is verse 105, It says, your word, so this is the word of the Lord, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Wow. Like, listen to this, y'all. Let me see if I can just show you this illustration, right? So I have my phone here and I'm gonna turn on my flashlight. Can you all see the flashlight on my phone? I'm not sure if you can see it. (laughs) So you take this word, right? And let me see if I can like put the flashlight. So this word, this is a funny thing. This funny illustration is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. So just like imagine this word, is lighting the way. So like as you're going through this life, you have this Bible, you have this guidebook to life and you're letting it guide and lead your life. Listen to me. If you don't want to fall away, you need to be rooted in this word. The body of Christ needs to get discernment. I'm encouraging you guys. I want to equip you. How do you get discernment from the Lord? How do you know that the church that you're attending is lukewarm or dead? And like, how do you know if you're you're just dying spiritually? there. We need discernment. We need rooting in the word of God as the body of Christ. I love in Psalm 119 and I really encourage you to read the full chapter of a Psalm 119 in the Bible because it really talks about just delighting in the word. And see, Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. How do we know his commandments? By taking heed according to his word, by coming under his word, by studying this word, meditating on it day and night and, and doing what it says, really getting rooted in this word. So the way that you get discernment as a believer is one, study the word of God and ask the Lord for discernment. The Holy Spirit will give you discernment if you will ask. First Timothy chapter four, verse one says, now the spirit expressly says that in later times, some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves. By, by That means like dedicating yourself by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. You know what that means? In the last days, we're living in the last days, y'all. In the last days, some will depart.
depart from the faith by devoting themselves to demons, to doctrines of demons, to teachings of demons. That means that there's doctrines in the church. I'm talking about the local churches that are of demons. The way that you have discernment, the way that you know what is a doctrine of demons and what is not a doctrine of demons is that you study this word of God, you know it for yourself and you live it out. We have to cut the feeding tube from our pastors. We have to stop relying on our pastor's relationship with the Lord in order to get us into heaven because that's not that just plain will not get you into heaven. Your parents' relationship with God will not get you into heaven. You must know the word of God for yourself so you do not depart from the faith, so you do not take heed or come under or devote yourself to a doctrine of demons. You need to take heed to the word of God. Stop taking heed to doctrines of demons. So I'm going to read you another verse in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14. It says this. It says this in the ESV, which is the English Standard Version. So that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. And when you read this in the Amplified Version, which is more of like a commentary type version, it says, so that we are no longer children, spiritually immature, tossed back and forth like ships on a stormy sea and carried about by every wind of of shifting doctrine by the cunning and trickery of unscrupulous men. I can't really pronounce that word. Uh, unscrupulous men. <laughs> by the deceitful scheming of people ready to do anything for personal profit. Y'all, that means we must not be tossed to and from by every wind of doctrine. Listen to me. If you have a plant that is in the ground, if its roots are not deep, that plant is going to blow as soon as a strong wind comes through. There is going to be strong winds. I'm warning you all right now. We are in the last days. Jesus said that deception is going to be big, running rampant in the last days. So we need to have laser-like eye discernment so that we can see. And it is only by the Holy Spirit and by getting rooted in the word of God that you're going to be able to see so clearly in these last days. So this plant, right? You have this plant no roots in the ground. It's just going to blow in the wind. It's going to be tossed to and fro in the wind. But if you have roots, deep roots, when those winds come, when those winds blow, you will be still rooted, solid, firmly planted in the word of God, in the truth, and in Jesus Christ. That is why I tell you guys, meditate, love his word, delight in his word. Let his word be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path so that you can see through the the darkness. Let his words be sweet to your taste, sweeter than honey to your mouth. See, in Acts chapter 4, verse 13, it talks about when Peter and John were before the council, right? And it says that they, I'll just read it. Acts chapter 4, verse 13 says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated common men, they were astonished and they recognized that they had been with Jesus. I think another translation talks about how they were unlearned men, but they marveled at the fact that they had been with Jesus. And so that is our job first as the body of Christ. It's not to minister to other people first. It is to minister to the Lord first. It is to be with Jesus first. And out of that place is where ministry will flow. Out of that place is where everything else will flow. If you will just be with Jesus, spend time with Jesus, get alone with Jesus. That is why I stress over and over and over again, the secret place, the secret place with Jesus. Because y'all, in these quick YouTube videos, I can't sit here and teach you the entire word of God. I'm going to try my best to keep teaching y'all by the power of the Holy Spirit, but the problem is I cannot be your relationship with Jesus. Preachers, pastors, YouTubers do not replace your relationship with Jesus. So this is a warning and this is to help you guys to be proactive. Spend time reading this word, studying this word, and doing what it says. And if you don't know where to start, I say start in the New Testament first. Go through the Gospels first. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and just keep reading from there. Read the New Testament first and then go from there. I really highly suggest starting there first if you're newer to this and you're just starting out digging into the Bible. So have you been with Jesus? Have you been in his word, reading his word? Y'all, that was my experience at that, that church. And I've seen so many winds of doctrine being blown around saying that this is true 
Christianity. But the problem is, this is true Christianity. I have two Bibles. I'm, I'm double Bible. I have double Bibles today. This Bible is true Christianity. This is biblical Christianity. And we have to stop watering down this word and being tossed by every wind of doctrine. Get rooted in this word so you can know truth for yourself. Ask the Holy Spirit to be your teacher. The Holy Spirit leads us in all truth and teaches us all things. But the problem is God resists the proud. He gives grace to the humble. So humble yourself before the Lord and he will teach you. He will lead you into all truth. Y'all, that is all I had for you today. I just wanted to share that quick experience that I had at that church. You know, it's interesting because part of like us wanted to walk out just with how crazy it was, how dead it was, how sad it was, but I just hope and pray that all those people truly come to know the Lord and all the people that are in dead and try and lukewarm churches, they are, their eyes are open so they, they can see. My question is, is Jesus your life? Because if Jesus is your life, if you're willing to die for Jesus, then you will live for him with all of your being right now. And yeah, I just want to encourage y'all. Like, I love y'all so much. And I'm so thankful that you watched this video. Y'all, I just did a video with my friend Maddie Ray. It's on holiness. Highly suggest you guys go watch it. It was a fire video. Maddie preached fire. So make sure you click up there to go watch that video. I hope y'all have a blessed rest of your week. God bless you guys. Keep looking to Jesus. Remember that everything's going to be all good. And peace out. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. Make sure to check out my other videos over here and subscribe over there.